week, the vote is yours, but this time, flip the ballot to make sure you have your say on Proposal 1. That's the referendum asking voters if we should hold a constitutional convention. It could all lead to changes to the state constitution, but not everybody thinks it's a good idea. Tonight, Two on Your Side looks at both sides as we get you ready for a vote two decades in the making. Good evening and welcome to this Two on Your Side special presentation, Two Sides to the Constitutional Convention. Election Day is next Tuesday and there's a big question that people all across Western New York are going to answer. Should we or should we not have a constitutional convention? Now we are going to spend the next half hour looking at the issues connected to that question. And if you are looking for the latest news, headlines, and forecasts, you can find them right there on the ticker at the bottom of your screen. All right, let's start things tonight with a question. What is a constitutional convention? To your side's Claudine Ewing found out most people aren't sure. What do you know about it? To be honest, not a whole lot. <laughs> what do you know about it? Uh, nothing at all. Uh, do you know anything about it? No, I don't. Did you even know it was on the ballot? No, I don't. Nothing at all. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, I am aware of the um, state constitution on the ballot. I think it's important for us to take a look at our constitution, especially some of the laws that are in place that are hindering economic development in our community. I think that we need some structural changes because we're in a whole different century and things have to be changed. But, like I said, other interests will probably mix in and just confuse the whole thing. So that's why I think a lot of people are not paying attention to it. Yes, I do know about it. How much do you know? A little bit. That they would be voting on whether to modify or have a convention to look at the New York State Constitution and modify it. Do you know anything about it? No, I do not. Do you want to know anything about it? Not really. Will you be voting? Yes. As you just saw, there are Western New Yorkers who just aren't sure exactly what is a constitutional convention. So to help them and even you make the decision on if we should or should not have one, to In Your Sides, Michael Wooten explains what is a constitutional convention and why it's even on the ballot. The big question, why is this question on the ballot? Simple, the current constitution requires it. Every 20 years, New York state voters must decide whether or not to have a constitutional convention in an automatic referendum. On election day, on the back of your ballot, you'll vote either yes or no and majority rules. If it passes, it's on to step two. In next year's general election, November 2018, voters would select their delegates to the convention. Almost anybody could run to be one of those delegates. There will be 204 total, three from each of the 63 senatorial districts and 15 at-large delegates selected statewide. Those 204 people would start meeting for the convention on April 2nd, 2019. They would debate for months and come up with proposals to change the state constitution. Each of those proposals would be on the general election ballot on November 5th, 2019. So voters would again have the ultimate say on whether or not to approve or reject each of the proposed amendments. Thank you, Michael. And with a clearer understanding of what happens during a constitutional convention, Two on Your Side, Steve Brown has a look at the arguments for and against having one. Albany, is it time to turn it upside down? Depends on who you ask. You don't hear a whole lot of folks walking down the street saying, boy, state government's working just great. You're absolutely right, but it's all about the people you put in. And the head of Buffalo's branch of the NAACP would much rather work with the state's elected officials than face unknowns and the expense of a constitutional convention. Is this a budgeted item when we're lacking money in health care, lacking money in our school systems? It's not a budgeted item, so where's this money coming from? And uh, 
frankly, could, could make things in New York worse, not better, because the same special interests that are controlling Albany right now would be at the trough uh, during the convention. The loudest voice against a constitutional convention, or CONCON for short, is New Yorkers Against Corruption. Maybe you've seen their TV ad, which says a CONCON is... Like the bar in Star Wars. Corrupt politicians there to grab more power and more of our money. New York City's special interest there to grab even more of our region's tax dollars. Who's paying for these ads? Almost exclusively labor unions. These are the top contributors to New Yorkers Against Corruption. Most of it came in in the last month. A big worry for unions, what might happen to state pensions if a CONCON -con were convened? Those pro-CONCON -con say there's nothing to worry about. They can't take away your pension. They cannot do that. It's written in stone. It's a contract. The contract clause of the United States Constitution protects your pension from being taken away, no matter what happens at the convention. And as this web ad points out, a number of newspaper editorial boards think a constitutional convention is a good idea. Thank you, Steve. Now, some change has come from previous constitutional conventions. To on your sides, Danny Spiewak takes a look back at past conventions and what's been accomplished. Dating back to the 18th century, New York has held nine constitutional conventions. The 1821 convention created a board to shape Erie Canal policy. The 1894 convention led to the Forever Wild provision that protects the Adirondacks and the Catskills from development. And the 1938 convention, out of the shadow of the Great Depression, put social welfare in the state constitution to help the needy. If you ask UB law professor James Gardner, those are all reasons to vote yes next week for another constitutional convention. There are things that we need to talk about in this state. We need to have a conversation about our government and not just a conversation that's aimed at complaining about the way things are, but a conversation that's aimed at figuring out how we can improve things. And a convention will do that. Like other proponents, Gardner says a convention could address ethics and statehouse corruption. But conventions haven't always led to change. All the people with vote no signs on their lawns around western New York could actually look to history to make a point. The last time there was a constitutional convention in 1967, the delegates put together a proposal that went to the voters, but the voters turned it down. With Nelson Rockefeller looking on as governor, the delegates offered a plan that would have shortened the Constitution and repealed an amendment that banned public aid to Catholic schools, among other things. But the voters rejected it by a nearly three to one margin. Mike Dealey of the New York State United Teachers recalls that the 1967 convention cost taxpayers millions. It came up with stuff that the voters didn't want, and we spent all that money and time to get nothing out of it. Groups like NYSET estimate the next constitutional convention could cost hundreds of millions of dollars, although that dollar figure has been vigorously disputed. We believe that uh, it's a waste of money. We already have a process to change the Constitution. But Gardner says a convention could be effective even if voters don't ultimately approve the proposal. It will focus the public's attention on the specific problems that we have, the causes of those problems, and these are important things for people to become aware of. Only if they decide they want to. Danny Spiewak, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Danny. And there's no doubt that those for and those against the Constitutional Convention feel strongly about their choice. And coming up, we'll bring you both sides of the debate. That's when this Two on Your Side special presentation, Two Sides to the Constitutional Convention, returns.
Welcome back to Two Sides of the Constitutional Convention, and Dr. Peter Gailey joins us now. Peter, first and foremost, what would be your first top five reforms that you'd like to see taken care of? The major issue that New York faces is a f the lack of trust in the people on the part of the government. They no longer trust them, and the great culprit here is the legislature. It's a pay-for-pay -pay culture. It's a culture that has drawn the Reagans and circled itself so that it, it doesn't respond to the populace anymore. There are three men in a room that uh, dominate uh, what happens in Albany, so we get no... Uh, more people die or get indicted than don't get elected in the legislature. How did that happen? So there's a serious problem with the legislature, and it doesn't seem that it has shown any indication that it will do something about it. But this, isn't this the reason why we have a legislature in Albany to take care of this on the day-to-day -day business of governing this state? Yes, indeed. And they've got themselves into a problem where they, they, they've lost the ability to do that and to keep the trust of the people. So, for example, they uh, don't report all their income. There are no limits on their income. There are no campaign financing. There's no... Uh, uh, no, no com ethics commission, there's no disclosure, there's no limits on how much income they can, uh, can, can gain. All of these are things that we might do to make the legislature more responsible. How, how would this constitutional convention work? If the voters say yes, the uh, next step in 2019 would be the selection of the delegates. There will be 204 delegates, uh, 15 selected at large, and the rest selected in the senatorial districts of the state. Once they're elected in 2018, they will meet in April of 2019. They will proceed to uh, uh, work through the issues that they want to deal with and then probably present the results to the electorate in November of 2019. And by the way, these conventions that are supposed to be do nothing or being controlled by same old, same old are the major source of every, almost every major right that this state has that we talk about losing, they were put there by the convention. How would you prevent special interest individuals from becoming those delegates? You know, that's what democracy is about. People have to elect delegates that will say, I'm going to work at these problems, I'm going to try and do the best I can for New York, and this is what I, I, uh, I, uh, I, I will campaign on. Now, if they don't like what the delegates can do, there's that final check. The people can say no. So think of how much the people are involved. The people decide whether we want to have a convention. The people decide who gets to be elected. And the people decide whether we like your work. You just said that's what democracy is about. Isn't that what the ballot box is for every few years? For the people at home to go and change their lawmakers so they can enable the change? Yes. and There's no uh, drumbeat for reform. That's right. Are you hearing Well, I'm not sure. Sure I am. Uh, the, 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 the judiciary is a mess. People are fed up with corruption. Uh, they indicate in every poll that they're dissatisfied with what's happening in Albany. They, for example, by 81 percent or so, want to have term limits. Do you think the legislature is going to term limit it itself? Well, let me ask you, that's a question. Do you think that they would? They would not. And moreover, the, the, the three men in a room syndrome that makes it difficult for local legislators to exercise any kind of independence could be reduced if we did a simple thing. Could the convention, put term change, limit, could the convention change the structure of New York government? Yes, it did. It could. It absolutely could. This has proven that this would cost tens of millions of dollars. And the last time they did this, nothing was adopted. We could spend all that money and still have no change. It's a fair point. Let me address it. For one thing, the, the amounts that they inflate for the convention are just silly. The 1967 convention spent $7 million. If you, inf you cost for inflation, that would bring the current cost to a constitutional convention in 2017 to roughly $55 million. Now, we spend $200 million on the legislature every year, $1 million per person. What do we get for our money? The question is never how much does it cost. The question is what kind of return will we get for our cost? That, that's, the, that's the first answer. Now, the second answer, you have a good question about this problem of, of the, the voters rejected the results. The convention made a mistake. It said take it all or nothing. No convention, I think, will make that mistake again. They'll put the controversial provisions in separate mm -hmm. packages and let the people choose which ones they want. Are you all working on social media now to get the folks at home to know about this for Election Day on November? We have, we have some things, but frankly, it is, it is difficult. Uh, 
for one thing, most of us will be adept at the, the Facebook and things, but we do have a couple of fascinating videos. One, mm -hmm. imitating the Hamilton. Mm -hmm. One more chance song, it's a very good one. And we have some other things, uh, but mostly we, we work at speaking to every group who wants to listen to us. And, uh, and as I say, there are some, most shows on but we are limited in our funds. And even if this does pass on November 7th, still has to go to the voters, right? It has to go to the voters at every step of the way. Dr. Peter Gailey, thank you so much for your time. Okay. We appreciate thank it. Mary you. Alice is going to join us in just a moment with the other side. Welcome back to our special Two Sides of the New York Constitutional Convention. Joining me right now is Joe Contafio. He is a member of NYSET, New York State United Teachers, and he's also a teacher in West Seneca. Joe, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Joe, start off by telling me your top two greatest concerns about a constitutional convention? Well, I think the first concern is the cost. As we look at the possible cost of a constitutional convention that doesn't have a specific agenda, doesn't have a timetable, it could cost tens of millions, some estimates and hundreds of millions of dollars to the taxpayers. Our legislators are elected and they're already there to do a job. I don't think that we need to spend more money. 
We can amend the Constitution at no additional cost to the taxpayer. The second thing that really concerns me is the risk. When there's not a specific agenda, and this agenda will be controlled by the delegates, and the delegates, for the most part, will be legislators and Albany insiders. How do we know that? Well, the last Constitutional Convention, over 80 percent of the delegates were legislators and Albany insiders but because wanted, they get to Yeah, we want to be clear that they are elected separately. It's not an automatic thing. So people who are not elected representatives necessarily could be chosen for this convention. Correct. But the last convention, all of the legislators who ran became delegates. So we know that's that what will happen. Uh, and, and the risks that are involved when you open up this uh, constitutional convention to anything, we can lose everything from public education, the protection for those that are the neediest, uh, protections for gun owners, protections for uh, wildlife and conservation. There's so many things that are at stake that to open up a constitutional convention at the cost and with those risks, it, we have a process in place that works. We can have the constitution amended. Okay, let me talk to you first about the cost because we have done a verify and uh, our study has shown that it could be less than 50 million, not 100 million. But isn't it worth it for New York State voters considering the amount of waste, fraud, and abuse that's happening from what they say is a broke system already? Isn't it worth an investment in taking a look at an old document and revising it or updating it? Well, I think that's what voting does. We have a democracy. We go to the ballot box at no additional cost to the taxpayers. And I think that to circumvent that with a constitutional convention that, again, as we have seen historically, will be run by the people that supposedly want to have fixed, I, I don't think is the process to go through. We have amended the Constitution. Well, advocates really argue that it's a systemic problem and that the lawmakers are the people who would be making those changes, and if they're entrenched and they're influenced by special interests, they're not going to make those changes. How do you answer that? Well, the Constitutional Convention doesn't address that because, again... Well, it could address a systemic change, the whole system of what kind of power electeds had and for how many years, because it could, it could create term limits. And so could an amendment to the Constitution that's been done over 200 times. Except the elected people would have to do that, and why would they give up that power? Well, they would also be the ones that would be running the Constitutional Convention. So Perhaps, but not necessarily. Well, we don't see any reason to believe that that would be any different than the last time we had a Constitutional Convention. Do you think, we have social media now, do you think that that could have an impact? Because certainly we've seen an awful lot of advertising on social media about the Constitutional Convention, some of it accurate, some of it not accurate. Don't you feel there'd be a heightened awareness and we would get better delegates because we have social media and more people would be aware? Well, I think that to rely on social media as the sole way to get information out, I think uh, we are seeing th that's very problematic. And I think the thing that has happened is the Constitutional Convention up front and on paper sounds like a good idea for the reasons that you mentioned, but when people get facts, when they look into the details and they have conversations with each other, they understand that it's not the best way to approach these issues. The best way to approach these issues is at the ballot box, electing our legislators and holding them accountable. Some of the people have said that uh Two of New York's highest elected leaders, uh, Sheldon Silver and Joseph Bruno, became the poster children, if you will, for bad behavior and what happens when people are entrenched and there are no term limits and they abuse their power. And a constitutional convention, opponents argue, would prevent them from being able to serve indefinitely. Do you not feel that that would be in the interest of all New Yorkers to have term limits, for example, on the people who would never vote them in because they'd be cutting off their own job? Well, term limits would not stop corruption if somebody's elected before those term limits. And again, we do have term limits. It's the, the election that occurs. So if we don't want somebody in office, we can vote them out. Okay. Joe uh, Contafio, we appreciate your coming in today and, and giving us the other side. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much. And when we come back, we will have more with our Verify segment about the New York Constitutional Convention. Stay with us.
Welcome back. There is plenty of information about the Constitutional Convention that is floating around. Well, two on your sides, Michael Wooten verified that there's some false information that voters need to see before heading to the polls. This November, voters will decide whether or not to have a constitutional convention here in New York State. And sadly, there's a lot of misinformation out there about just what it is and how it will work. A viewer named Tammy sent me this long viral post that's being shared around on Facebook. It has some wild claims. Tammy asked us to verify what's real and what's not. First, the message claims the Constitutional Convention question will be on the back of your ballot. That's true according to the Erie County Board of Elections. A pro-convention advocate named Evan Davis sued to try to force the question to the front of the ballot, but he since dropped that lawsuit. The question will be on the back. The next claim in the message is frankly ridiculous. It says if you don't actively vote no, your vote is automatically read as yes. A state board of elections spokesman said that's completely untrue. A blank vote by law won't count for either side. Next, the more complicated issue to sort out, cost. Opponents say a constitutional convention will be a waste of money. That viral message claims taxpayers will be footing the bills, which are estimated to be over $100 million. It's hard to know exactly how much a convention would cost. There are so many factors to weigh in, but we can look to the past. The last constitutional convention was in 1967. Chris Bobst, a Buffalo businessman, attorney, and author of this book, is our source. He went through spending records and found the 67 constitutional convention cost $7 million. With inflation, that will be $51 million today. That's a fraction of what some anti-convention groups claim. Take New Yorkers Against Corruption, which falsely estimates a convention would cost taxpayers a staggering $300 million. So here's what we can verify. The Constitutional Convention is controversial. There's strong opposition and strong support. So be skeptical of what you hear from the extremes of both sides. Have something you want us to verify? Reach out on social media or email us. Verify at WGRZ.com. Michael Wooten, Channel 2 News. Thank you so much for joining us for this Two on Your Side special presentation two sides to the Constitutional Convention. And remember, the Constitutional Convention question will not be on the front, it will be on the back of your ballot when you get out and vote on November 7th. Thank you for joining us. Good night.